What's up, everybody? Ryan Thomas here live on Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. As I wait for um, Papa Thomas Tate, Daddy Dean, Drizzy Dean, whatever you want, <laughs> whatever you want to call him. Um, wait for my dad to meet up with me here. Um, I got a little bit of time to kill. And wanted to hop on and give my take on something that I've already talked about a little bit in, in just little minute detail. I talked about it on Matt Johnson's Two Point Conversation. The Two Point Conversation is a podcast that you can subscribe to on iTunes. It is also available on Instagram, excuse me, Instagram and Facebook. Go to all those sites. You will find it. Two Point Conversation. Uh, Matt Johnson had me on as a guest on Tuesday. The episode was released on Wednesday, and it was a fantastic um, uh, guest spot for me. I I very, very much enjoyed it. And to find out that I was the first guest, recurring guest, in the history of the show was really cool. So I'm very happy to add that into my repertoire, into my resume, if you will. Um, and it was just a great two hour long show where we talked about each and every team in the national football league, recapped each and every game from week 11 and also gave our picks for week 12. I'm going to tune into that, mark down who I picked. I believe I'm in good shape thus far in terms of the Thanksgiving day games, being that I picked Chicago and I picked Dallas two and O to start. And tonight, There is the New Orleans Saints and the Atlanta Falcons, which that game is taking place right now. And I picked the Saints, but I do believe that game will be close. I don't think that that game will be a blowout. But the Saints have really shocked me this year with how dominant they have looked here in 2018. So all that being said, as I alluded to, I've already talked about this topic. I talked about it on the two-point conversation, but I'm going to add to it on my podcast, the Thomas Take Sports Podcast, and that is the J.J. Watt hit on Alex Smith. Alex Smith is out for the rest of the season. Obviously, Colt McCoy under center today did some okay things, looked okay today, but did not do enough to get a W, escape with a W from Jerry World. So the hit on Alex Smith, I thought, was okay. But in watching it over and over again, seeing what actually happened and allowed his foot to get completely spun around and twisted and just completely shredded made me realize that that was a dirty hit by J.J. Watt. Now, me saying that J.J. Watt laid out a dirty hit, it's not me saying that. It's not me saying that J.J. Watt is a dirty player. But the hit is what the real problem is, a microcosm problem that the NFL is trying to combat. J.J. Watt's hit is right then and there what the NFL is trying to avoid, what the NFL says they're trying to avoid. And when you see a play like that and you wonder to yourself, was there a flag thrown on that play? That makes me wonder, what is the what is the I don't even want to say it, but what what's the point? What is the point of having a roughing the passer penalty when these things happen and these guys actually get hurt for the season, maybe even for next season? Alex Smith very well may never play a down again in the National Football League after that hit. And yet I have to wonder whether there was a flag, and I know that there was not a flag called on that play Post, you know, post game, I came to that realization, was able to find that out for myself. Just bullshit. Bullshit at its finest. And and I hate to, you know, throw out a cuss word on the podcast. I'm not known to do that. But that is the first word that comes to mind when thinking of this story. Just plain bull, you know what. So. What is it that the NFL is actually trying to accomplish? If they're trying to accomplish player safety, if they're trying to accomplish quarterback safety, 
handicapping defense is even more handicapping defense is even more than they already are in terms of how a corner can cover a wide receiver, in terms of how a linebacker can cover a tight end. In terms of pass coverage, that's why we're seeing these big numbers get thrown around with Pat Mahomes and Jared Goff. Defenses can't defend the way that they used to in the 1980s and the 1970s. The rules are so different. But if the rules are different, why didn't something happen? Why wasn't a flag thrown? Why was J.J. Watt allowed to continue to play in that game? There should have been an automatic ejection, whether it was meant to happen or not, whether J.J. Watt thought that that was what was going to happen when he finished the job, known as the hit by number 23. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but he finished the job. Boy, did he finish the job. Alex Smith's fibula was poking out of the skin. He finished the job. Alex Smith had to go to an ambulance with pads on. The, the ambulance had to cut the pads off and take him to the hospital to get surgery, emergency surgery, on his leg. What a shame. And it's unfortunate because... I've always liked Alex Smith. I've always felt like he's been the fall guy in Kansas City, the fall guy in in uh, San Fran, and then he doesn't even get a chance to, to go out the way he wants to go out. I really hope I'm wrong in saying that, but it, that is not an injury that a guy just quickly comes back from. That's an injury that takes a long time to come back from, a year, maybe even two. And to know that J.J. Watt wasn't even ejected, wasn't even fined, wasn't even get thrown up. The, the flag, the yellow flag that's tucked into the ref's ass wasn't even thrown. I, I just, I don't get it. And it's so frustrating because as, for as long as I've been a football fan, my, my basically my entire life, I've seen this game change so much over the last 10 years. So much this game has changed. In terms of the rules... They've changed the rules almost every single year since Roger Goodell became the commissioner of the National Football League. Some, somewhat for the better, somewhat for worse. But it's ridiculous. If we're going to make these rules, that's fine. If we're going to go about these rules, that's okay. If we're going to have rules in which they're, they're written out due to the league wanting to make player safety priority, when these things happen, it's not made a priority. When these things happen to anybody, and I will go here, when these things happen to anybody but Tom Brady, but Aaron Rodgers, but Peyton Manning, th- th- these things are, j- these guys are thrown to the wolves. But if it's Alex Smith, it doesn't matter. I, I have a really hard time putting that together. I really do. I have a really hard time justifying that. And I'm not jumping the gun and I'm not over embellishing this because I watched it multiple times and the replay is the same every single time. 23 comes through the middle and a safety corner blitz makes first contact and then the 275 pound behemoth beast that is J.J. Watt rolls Alex Smith's leg the opposite direction, much like Joe Theismann's injury. And oddly enough, that was another famous pass rusher that laid down that hit in Lawrence Taylor. But what a shame. If we have these rules, if we're going to talk about these new rules and how the NFL is safe, why was nothing done in regards to that hit? And to this very minute, to this very minute, J.J. Watt has had no quote-unquote punishment, and I know it was a mistake, it's football, these things happen, but this is what the NFL wants to do. I don't I don't care if these guys get punished or not, but if they're going to come out and try to save face that this league is safe, then it needs to go all the way across the board for every single player. They cannot politically pick and choose who gets punished based on who they hit. It's bull crap. It's baloney. I'm tired of it. It's 2018. If Roger Goodell wants to make the NFL safe again, he needs to stick to his guns. Not safe again, but safer or whatever. He needs to stick to his guns and cut the shit. Because fans are sick and tired of it. 
outside of the fact that you have people not watching the league as much due to the national anthem protests of the last couple years, that is reason number two. Reason number one is the fact that they've changed the rules so much that the game doesn't even look the same. You don't even see as many great... When you see a great defensive play, it's a bigger deal because it rarely happens. Look at the league right now. Look at the scoring. Look at even the teams that have mediocre offenses. Colt McCoy's offense today put up 23. Dallas's defense is not that bad, but Dallas's defense can be handicapped by the rules of the NFL, much like everybody else. It's just not fair. I get that you need to make player safety a priority. I understand it. I get it. That's all well and good. But enough is enough. If we're going to be that force, if the NFL wants to be that driving force to player safety, they have to throw that out there for every player and every hit and every scenario. Enough is enough. We should have one strict punishment. Shouldn't be, oh, well, that wasn't as dirty a hit as the last one. No, it should be, if, that's a, if that is deemed dirty by one person and it's, a, and it's a career-ending injury, then it is dirty. If it's a good hit or a bad hit or if the guy walks under his own power, then that's fine. But Alex Smith did not. Alex Smith is probably not even walking right now with the damage that is done to his leg. Maybe he's got a walking boot. I'm not sure on that. But that is not. A quick fix. And I don't know why more people aren't talking about this. It's something that I've been thinking of since the moment I watched the replay the the twelfth time. Was there a flag on that play? I asked Matt Johnson and, and he said no, and I I'm taking his word for it and I watched it and there was not. It's garbage. Hot garbage. The NFL wants to protect players. It should protect every player. Especially ones that could quite possibly have a career-ending injury. Take care, everybody.